Hey everyone, this is going to be my alien frame build from Impulse RC. Um, everybody's been talking about it. And I'm just going to show you a basic guide on how I'm going to build mine um, and how you can build yours if you need any tips or tricks um, from what I've learned um, over the last year of building uh, racing quads. So these are just the tips and tricks and I'm going to show you everything you need. Um, now the first thing you're going to need to get is that awesome looking frame right there. and This is it. You're going to get all the pieces of the frame that come with it, your camera mounts, your transmitter mounts, your awesome looking alien PD power distribution board. You're also going to need a flight controller which is very important. This is the one that they have on their website. It's the Moto Lab Tornado F3 Racing FPV um, flight controller. It runs clean flight. Um, so you're going to need that. Of course it comes with the pins that you're going to have to solder onto it. You're likely going to need a Palulu 5 volt voltage regulation regulator which uh, basically acts as a back to power your um, your receiver and your transmitter and your um, your of course flight controller. Now you can get some cheaper um, ESCs that have BECs built in but if you go with the Opto ESCs and ESCs that don't have BECs built in um, then you're definitely going to want to get this so that you can actually have power going to your flight controller. You're going to need a receiver as I was just talking about. Um, you're gonna my recommendation is the FreeSky X4R S-Bus receiver. It's an absolutely amazing receiver and it's super tiny. Um, you're going to need a video transmission transmitter, which is kind of standard. This is the ET200 from Eosheen transmitter. It works pretty well. I have the 600 um, milliamp uh, or 600 milliwatt one two. Works great. The 32 channels, so everything you need. Pretty cheap, 20 bucks, um, but still works good. You're going to need some motors. Um, you can buy the covers for $21 a piece, or you can buy Emaxes, which run really well. Um, not as high quality, but just about as much thrust. And these are only about, depending on where you get them from, anywhere from $11 to $15 a piece. Um, and you're going to need four of those. You're going to need a FPV video camera. Now, this is the one that they recommend on the website from Impulse RC. Um, it's pretty tiny and it's specifically fitted to be able to mount to this setup for the frame so it's this is it's a it's a decently priced camera and it's got good picture quality and it's specifically for it so there's no reason not to get it it's thirty seven dollars um, you're gonna need some file sets which they if you go with this frame they will provide you with file sets um, they come in really handy um, Likely you're going to want some double sided tape, um, some tools, some, uh, you know, wire stripper, wire cutter, maybe some flux in case you're not that great at soldering, um, some desolder, which can come in very handy, especially if you're soldering directly to the ESCs. And speaking of the ESCs, you're going to need some ESCs. You need four of them. You can always buy an extra one just in case one ends up being bad. Um, I got the BL Heli 20 amp Opto ESCs from DYS. Um, they're are pretty darn good ESC, and they're significantly cheaper than the Kiss 20 amps, and aren't as likely to burn up. Even though the 20, uh, the 18 amp Kiss ESCs definitely provide more provide more performance, but these will definitely 100% get the job done, and you can reflash them with the latest BL Heli, um, and they're only 11 bucks a piece. I need some wire cutters, as I already mentioned. Um, you're gonna need a battery strap. Um, this is the uh, nuts and bolts and battery pad that you get with your your alien frame. I likely want to have some heat shrink handy. Um, I have multicolored ones. Um, you're gonna want some liquid electrical tape. Um, you actually won't need standoffs for this this build because they give you everything in here 
but um, for other quads, you're very likely to need some standoffs and they come in handy. Probably gonna want some wrap strap. Um, this is gonna really help you put everything together and hold it down tightly. Um, and it works better than a zip tie. And then you're gonna need, of course, handy dandy soldering iron. And some blue Loctite because you don't wanna sling any motors. So this is all the stuff that we need. And let's get started. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna take your file um, and you're gonna wanna file down all these edges on here. Might as well do it on the whole thing. Um, they recommend to do it specifically on this part. If you just ever so slightly file down I'm not going to do this because I already did it on this on this quad. Um, but you're going to want to file the edges all the way around on both sides just to make it kind of smooth so that it doesn't destroy your battery strap. Also adds a microscopic addition of um, aerodynamics and also helps to protect if in case like you hit anything, um, it's you're not going to be hitting a sharp point. It's going to be more likely to slightly bounce uh, or to slide off of whatever it hits, especially if you hit it at an angle, um, which is going to help prevent carbon fiber fray fraying, which you don't really need to worry too much about because this is really high grade carbon fiber. So another thing that you're going to add to, um, well that you can add to the edges of your carbon fiber frame is cyanoacrylic adhesive. Um, and you can get the Loctite version but this is just a hobby town version. It works good, uh, medium strength, but what it does is it just helps pre prevent fraying on these edges. Um, and this was a little trick that I actually picked up from Mr. Steel on YouTube in his, his guide, uh, his video. He made a point that since there's no rosin that coats these edges because it's cut directly from the carbon fiber, then um, you know these edges can fray, especially when hitting really hard concrete. Now I haven't really, gotten to hit any hard concrete yet uh, fortunately but um, just to prevent that anyway you might as well throw a little bit of cyanoacrylic adhesive on it so once you get the edges all polished up and nice you're gonna put this cyanoacrylic on there let me go ahead and, and do that I like to do that with um, a little q-tip um, and some electrical tape I don't like to use the actual fuzzy part because I don't like getting fuzz in, in, uh, in the glue and more importantly in your quad but I do like to use a little electric tape on it to get it all nice looking good and you can do the whole frame um, if you want to all the edges but uh, Generally, you just really want to do, um, you can also mainly just do the ones that are going to take the most the most damage. By the way, you should probably have something, some good ventilation for this stuff because it stinks. The next step is to put your motors on your arms. And so for that, you want to figure out which way it goes. Now, this is going to be the front of your alien quad. This is the one with the two triangles and the uh, the pentagon shapes instead of the four triangles. So this is going to be your front. Looks side on the same on both sides, so it doesn't matter. And your arms will attach directly to this. So you're going to have three, two arms like this. And then you're going to have the other two arms like this. So that's going to be the layout of your quad. And then you'll have the top piece. So yeah, the top piece like this, which is this being the front of your quad. So the first thing is, is you need to figure out where the motors go. Now, for every quad I've built, it's always this one's usually number one on clean flight. This is two, this is three, and this is four. So one, 
uh, should be uh, counterclockwise and this should be clockwise, counterclockwise and then clockwise again. So we need to make sure we got the right motors for that. So let's put these motors on. We're going to use the Allen wrench provided with it and we're going to use plastic baggie. If I could get this baggy open, there we go. I'm just trying to tear it open. Might as well. Now, we are going to need to use, because they provide you two sets of bolts, we're going to want to use the longer ones. Since this is so thick, these are pretty thick, so you're going to want to use the longer ones, otherwise they won't go, go through far, far enough on the shorter ones. So we'll put those shorter ones to the side. Let's put these bolts in. Now an important thing here is the thread lock. You always want to have thread lock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lid on this to put my blue thread lock on. The dab, it's quite a bit, but I'll get the job done. I'll take this first one. Flip it over, make sure it's lined up, kind of center, and just put a dab on the edge there. Let's see, can we see those holes? Yes, we can. Just want a little dab. Alright, so there we go. All the uh, all the bolts are in there. Of course, you always go diagonal when you tighten them up. I'm just hand tightening them right now. That center clip's not dragging on anything. And I'm tight, tightening down the rest of the way. You don't have to tighten it too tight either. That thread lock really does does a lot of good. Just get it, you know, relatively tight. Just make sure it's snug. One last time. All right. So there we go. There we have it. Now in this build, your power distribution board, which is this, is going to be sitting right on top of there through the brackets or through the bolts. So that means that your ESCs are going to get wired up right here on these two things. Now, let's see, there we go. There's the ESC. Alright, so, you know, if we soldered these ESCs right here, I mean, come on, you're over on the other side now at that point. So, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to solder the ES, uh, these pads, I'm going to cut them back. I'm going to solder them directly onto the board. So that's where my trusty little um, X Acto knife comes into play. Be careful not to cut these wires because if you do and you don't have an extra one, you're kind of screwed. So just peel that back. I'm just gonna, I like to, I'll just take the whole thing off. Alright, so there we go. Turn on my soldering iron. I should have been heating that up a while ago. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these back, probably about to right there. We're gonna wire them straight up, and then we're gonna wire these to there. And I'm probably gonna cut them back pretty short. But we're going to solder on these, since this is going to be going counterclockwise, we'll wire, wire them one to one. So this one will be going that one, and so on and so forth. Um, let me get, wait for this thing to heat up. 
and then we'll get started. Sorry, my hand's in the way, I know. Alright, there we go. Alright, just solder up these pads a little bit. Oops. Yeah. Now, let's see how long it is that we need to make these. there yeah, so let's cut those off there keep it from getting hot and uh, let's see let's strip our wires Working a little better. All right, so this is going to be. Let's get those straight. This is going to be wired straight. So each one of those is going to go there. Let's just get that pad sitting there. And uh, let's actually tin our wires first so the solder flows nice and even. 